Hello, I'm Diva, and I would like to welcome you to the absolutely Divalicious podcast. Dear future me, I'd gladly start off the story by asking how you are and what you've been up to, but I'm more than aware that I will never know the answer because every little part of this moment will become entangled with the past. I'll also clarify that I don't mean this in a negative tone, simply just observative and self-aware. That's all. I could start this as a personal rant, and chances are I might, since otherwise this won't be as poetic nor exciting and it'd just be me making stuff up. So, my name is Diva, as I'm sure you've already known, unless I change my name. My life isn't that much different from the people around me. I live a pretty normal life, or at least what I consider normal, with my parents, sister, and dog, who unsurprisingly has many different names. Most of my online friends know him as Dry Doggo, but his actual name is Huso or my best friend. The true story behind him being adopted is that he was a stray dog who would greet me every day before and after class. One day, Huso randomly disappeared, making us all worried but we had thought that he just went on a longer walk than usual. After five days of not seeing him anywhere around the neighborhood, we knew something was not right, so we started going around asking if anyone had seen him. Turns out, the dog catchers caught him since there were rumors that there was a very vicious dog in that exact neighborhood. Now, I'd like to clarify that Huso is neither vicious nor dangerous in any shape or form. He's a very loving dog that was always careful when there were kids around, and I do not recall him ever barking on people, just quarrels as he does to this day. Anyways, that's when our journey of looking for him began, and we searched every dog shelter just to find any clues possible. Now, here's the thing. The reason this was so stressful was that we've been told if we do not find him, he'd be put down, but yet they didn't want to tell us where he is. The deadline was 10 days, so not a lot of time either considering that my parents had work and my sibling and I had school. On the 10th day, we visited at least 6 shelters from around the area looking for clues and hoping to find him, which sadly wasn't the case. We came back home broken that we had missed our chance and thinking that they had probably put him down by now. I can't even remember how I slept that night, all I know is that we've all had these horrible nightmares. The next morning, it was a beautiful and sunny Saturday morning when we got a call from a close friend of ours who had the most amazing news. She found Dry Doggo in a shelter that we initially visited three times and even though I remember it through a cloud, I still remember seeing him there, but the people working told us that that was another dog. I went there with my dad and I can't even start to explain the emotions we felt. Firstly, it was a shelter that was a bit out of town, so it took us like an hour or two to get there, and we were already full of anticipation that the whole drive there we were really just hoping everything ends well. Secondly, the moment we got to the shelter, I remember witnessing something that still gives me chills to this day. The dog shelter was an outside one, and it looked horrible. All you could hear was dogs barking at you, begging you to take them home with you. It seemed to me that certain dogs either haven't been fed for a few days, or they've just been ignoring the food they were given. We got out of the car and we started talking to the lady that leads the shelter, the same lady that told us they didn't have my dog there. She still didn't want to give in and was very hard to talk to. Then it got to the point where my dad got angry and called up his friend to tell the lady that our dog is in fact there and that we are here to pick him up whether she likes it or not. After she heard her boss demand those things, it's as if her personality took a 360 degree turn, but yet she still kept convincing us how he's in fact a very dangerous dog and that we should not take him home. When she took us to him, all I could say is that he looked horrible. Not only was he scared to death, but it seemed to me like he hasn't slept for days on end. He looked so bloated and it was just heart-wrenching. With him in cage, there were two other dogs that were actually his friends back in the neighborhood. One of them was a retired Doberman who used to be a police dog, but after a heart attack he retired and became a stray in the streets. He was supposedly adopted by someone in Germany. The other dog was basically a puppy that has been probably adopted by now. She was very charming and heartwarming. The lady got in and picked up Huso so roughly that his leg got stuck between the cage's metal and he made a bark noise signaling that she heard him. 
As soon as she put him on the ground, I remember him running up to us, excited that someone has finally come to pick him up and help him out. The whole walk to the car, he couldn't contain his happiness and he was just jumping around running back to us to hug us and so on. Looking back to that moment, I'm surprised I haven't let a tear down, since it was a really scary and sad experience, but it thankfully had a good ending. I honestly thought Huso was going to be scared of car rides, but as soon as we got to the car, he immediately jumped into the boots and stuck his head out of the window. Now, he is an large dog, more medium, I'd say, but if he gets up on two paws, he's almost my height. And no, I'm not short, I'm actually pretty tall, it's just that I guess he stretches his legs or something, I have no clue. Afterwards, we took him to the vet, made sure he was vaccinated and didn't have any diseases that could potentially put him in life danger, which he thankfully didn't, and then we took him back home. Since then, Drido has been the happiest dog that could exist out there, living in his own little house, surrounding with many toys and basically living like a king, which he of course deserves. He has his moments like all of us, but it was a decision I have never regretted. We have many beautiful moments together and I'm hoping to experience more in the near future. Also, a bonus story, um, the story behind his name, Drydogo, is basically thanks to my fellow Slavic friend Daisha who I met in a Discord server last year. We talked about our pets and somehow got to the point how Huso's name could also be Suho, which means dry in our native languages, and that was the whole story behind how he got his name. In the end, I'd like to give a big thank you to my shoddy Daisha and say that I'm really glad I met you and that I love you. Thank you very much.